Well, okay. What the hell? Let me let me fix my stream deck. <laughs> my my mute button wasn't working for some reason. Uh, I had to unmute manually, like some sort of a savage. Um. Anyway. Uh, what's up? Happy Monday. Um, tonight we are gonna continue Shin Onimusha: Dawn of Dreams. This old game right here. Uh, we started this on Saturday, made some decent progress, and um, I have to say I'm pretty lukewarm on this game so far, and I'm a little worried, if I have to be perfectly honest, um, about its ability to to um, redeem itself. Uh, let me... Why does my stream deck just... What's going on? Okay, I'm trying to fix... This one button just stopped working for some reason. Um... Uh, I would say, like, fuck it, I'll fix this later, except <clears throat> I will completely forget that this thing... Anytime I'm gonna mute or unmute, I'm gonna just... not remember. <laughs> uh, so I wanna see if I can... Uh, oh, boy. Okay, let me see if I can, uh... Do that. Let me, uh... So, okay, so the, the... For some reason, like, Stream Deck is usually running in the background, but when I was setting up to start the stream, it was not running, so I had to boot it up. So now I'm all paranoid that if there's something that's all broken in it now. Because now it's just... <sighs> okay, so what about... Um... Which stu... No, that's not what I want. I know this is making for some riveting stream action here, but I... <sighs> I want to see if I can fix this before it's... It's too late. Activate or deactivate an audio source? Yes. But then the list of audio sources is just empty. There are no audio sources. Okay, let me... Try to restart Stream Deck, I guess? I mean, it's worth a shot. Let me, uh... I mean, it could also just break more stuff. Who knows? <laughs> well, hey. I mean, streaming... Okay, let me try this real quick. It's working now. Okay, well, I guess just turning it off and on again was the solution. Uh, well, that went unexpectedly well. <laughs> I guess we'll see if that uh, that'll that'll hold. <clears throat> anyway, uh, with that out of the way, <laughs> um, yeah, we started uh, Onimusha Four, Shin Onimusha: Dawn of Dreams, and uh, it was a game I'd looked forward to playing. I had looked, I'd been looking forward to, uh, because it seemed like somewhat controversial. And I'd heard very little in terms of specifics, but I guess I'd had the impression that the major complaint with the game was that it was really different from all the others, which is definitely true. Um, the thing that kind of, I don't know if compelling is the right word, but Let's say what compels me, what confounds me the most, maybe, is that I'm not really enjoying my time with the game an awful lot, but I'm struggling to put my finger on why. And I find that interesting. Um, you could say that there are things like, you know, the, the, the characters or the way there's like a bunch of dialogue, the way that sort of plays out is a little bit, I don't know. I, and I do think for sure um, a lot of it is just a, a smattering of small things. Like, it's not um, it's different, yes, and that's like different in many things that, that all kind of add up, some of which are more distinctly bad, others that just feel a little foreign after playing three games that are very similar. 
But I'm thinking also that the... Some of it is kind of to do with pacing and scale and scope, and those things are kind of hard to get a good grasp on. Like, you can sense in some cases, to, to a degree, evidently, if something's kind of off there even from the beginning, if everything is just feeling kind of slow and boring. But if that is an issue that tends, if nothing else, that tends to get exacerbated with length. <laughs> so maybe we'll have a clear idea that the game just feels very kind of drawn out. <clears throat> um... But I definitely feel like there's something to do with, like, the level design. There's something to do with, like, the traversal and navigating spaces that just feels tedious in a way that never really did in the other games, I feel like. Um, but I couldn't describe it exactly, and I, I'm not sure if I could point to anything specific that's, like, made... Like, I guess um, one of the last stages we kind of did... Um, last time was we had to go through all these statues and pick up these um orbs there's a lot of orbs in <laughs> in um uh, in onimusha or gems whatever and you'd pick it out of one and that would unlock something so you go to place it there and then you go back it was just a, a there's like six rooms but you have to backtrack and run around 50 times and that just felt like someone basically said like how can we how can we take these rooms and extend the maximum amount of gameplay out of it um, with no consideration to whether it's interesting or compelling. Like, technically, you could describe it as some kind of a puzzle solving, because you had to, like, you got a gem and there's a number, you had to, like, put that gem in the corresponding statue and whatever. Um, but the way the game sort of visualizes and presents the numbers and the statues made it instantly clear to me that I'm not going to... It's not going to be worth it to bother trying to memorize which statue is in which location. I'll just brute force it by kind of running around. So, I mean, technically, I might have um, made that section take longer than it needed to if I'd known exactly where to go. But it didn't feel like I was necessarily supposed to do that. And everything looked the same. That's kind of what I mean about it not being meant to do that. Like, kind of... They didn't have six very distinct statues. They had six identical rooms with six identical statues, basically. And I would have to make an unreasonable amount of effort to distinguish and memorize which was in which location, I felt like. Um, and that seemed, felt to me like not at all intellectually compelling or like engaging. Same with some of the like the elevators in this underground cave section that I think we're still in now. Yeah. And I don't know. It's... I wouldn't exactly say the level design and environments and... That kind of stuff is was like a from a gameplay perspective uh was a very compelling part of the previous games uh, aesthetically and conceptually there were some incredible locations in the other games um but not all of them were great that i didn't i don't think three was good in that regard um three had very mundane and boring locations for the most part um but i think all three of the previous games like running around and like, i wouldn't describe the level design as anything particularly noteworthy but I do feel like the fourth game somehow was making a worse, like doing a worse job of it. So it's kind of interesting in that you wouldn't... Since I would not have thought of the first three games as having, you know, good level design, that makes it weird to say that bad level design is suddenly a departure or a failure. I guess it's a sliding scale, and it can be worse without having without having crossed a, a threshold from good to bad, just from middling to to bad, I guess. Um, but there's just, like, stuff I find myself kind of annoyed with in Dawn of Dreams that I never, didn't feel before. And I think overall, like, so far, obviously I'm not that far into it, like four hours or so. Um... The, the, the one tangible thing I can say, unquestionably, which isn't, like, um, a, you know, a statement on, on the quality or, or anything, but just documenting my experience playing these games, is that in all the other games so far in the Onimusha series, after I finished my first, like, stream, I was excited to keep playing. And I was, like, looking forward to continuing to play to see what was happening next. And 
I didn't really feel that after my first session of Unamusha 4. Like, it was just kind of, mm, eh, this is kind of whatever. And it's like, I guess I'll continue. I will continue and we'll see where it goes. But those other times it was more like, man, I wish I didn't have to wait until the next stream to keep playing. Because uh, I was just excited to keep playing. And this is like, eh, you know, I could skip this game for a stream or two and it wouldn't really bother me. I'll, I'll get back to it when I get back to it. Um, that doesn't necessarily reflect the experience of the entire game, but that's how we feel so far. Hey, what's up, Atomic Runner? I'm uh, just sorting my thoughts on Shin Onimusha, Dawn of Dreams so far, and uh, how I'm fairly lukewarm on it, and I'm still interested to see if that is going to change. Um, we shall see how, how much it, it might be able to change over the course of uh, the next couple of hours, I suppose. Uh, Brunichi, what is up? Be Monday to you and everyone else. I, uh, of course, I'm, I'm making a kind of mental ranking of these games as we go. And uh, so far, I guess that's the other thing. I can say so far, it's at the bottom of my list. But I think all three games up until this point sort of started at the bottom of my ranking when I first played them anyway, because none of them had really gotten to show the the, the coolest parts of them yet. Um, I guess I don't think anything is going to change particularly between the first three games. Although, thinking about it, I guess it's not so sure. I think Unamusha 2 is my favorite, uh, and I don't think that's going to change. I mean, I like 2 more than 3. That's kind of Im immovable. Um, I, I, the four could end up anywhere on the list uh, by the end. But I'm not really sure if I like three or one more, to be honest. I think I think I like two better than one because there's nothing really that the first game does that the second game doesn't also do. Um, whereas three and one, they're different enough that you could look to kind of strengths and weaknesses. Like, I think there's certain things that three did well with streamlining some of the upgrade stuff and, and what have you. Uh, and there was, of course, some cool stuff with the time travel and everything else. But I think if three had had, if three had been visually as cool as the first two games with the, uh, you know, the set camera angle presentation, I still think I would have liked two more because I just think two had some cooler stuff in it. But it would make, it would give the first game it would take away advantages that it has because I think what the first game has over the third one, in my mind currently, is a lot to do with that kind of presentation stuff. Um, because three, the environments in the presentation, even though they were exceptionally well done, well, well done, they they were less interesting. Yeah, like Onimusha Two was was such a you know pretty much the pinnacle of Capcom's like pre-rendered stuff. I haven't really played RE0, so it's possible that that showcase is similar, sort of trickery. Um, obviously, the the first Resident Evil remake does to a degree, but I still felt that Onimusha 2 was like a step above. So it was... Um, and I mean, that's the other interesting thing. Like, I can't look at Onimusha 3 without thinking what could have been. Like, what if Onimusha 3 had, had built on that tech and that style and did it even better than Onimusha 2 did? It could have been something really special. But it would still have, you know, parks and parking lots and sewers and like just pretty boring locations. Um, although, again, I suppose certain locations could have looked a lot more exciting. I mean, this is extremely hypothetical, <laughs> so I don't know. But I think. I fully expect Onimusha 2 to be my kind of undisputed favorite by the end of this, and that is absolutely not the expectation I had going into playing these games. Um, which, you know, that's fun. It's always fun to be a little bit surprised. Um, well, <laughs> unless it's like a terrible surprise, but it hasn't been. What is the benefit of in-game render after all? Like, I think, obviously, you do get... I mean, that's a great question, in a sense, because um, I think the 
the broad answer to that question is obvious because it means you can um, you can make something more dynamic. Uh, you can move the camera around. You can you can give player control over the camera, uh, which may or may not be a plus. Like you can obviously you get kind of more options in terms of how to present uh, certain things visually. However, I feel like Onimusha three, and this is the problem. Onimusha 3 kind of fails to live up to that because they don't really do much interesting with the camera. Like, the thing that happens, of course, is that the camera is rarely entirely static. Usually, the camera will, will shift a little bit within its kind of set view. Sometimes it, it pans with you as kind of like a scrolling camera. Um, but I don't think it does enough to justify what was lost. Um, sort of aesthetically and even you know even with the relatively static angles even those usually didn't look nearly as interesting as a lot of the stuff in one and two and i think even but like by any standards i think the camera in onimusha 3 is just like surprisingly i felt that like the camera in three of all four games Onimusha 3 is by far the game that has the most camera issues. Which is, again, another thing I would not have expected to have said about these games. You would kind of think that, like, yeah, you know, static angles are cool for what you can do, but, you know, it's, it's got a lot of limitations and it can make the experience a bit clunky and frustrating in cases, you know, where you have enemies that are sort of, you have to fight across camera angle borders and stuff. But I felt like I ran into those kinds of problems way more in 3 than I ever did in 1 or 2. So I think they they made a sacrifice without really capitalizing on the benefits with the with the direction they took. But having said that, I can I cannot fault them for going that direction because from a let's simplify it call it a business standpoint I think going in the direction they did was absolutely the right choice in terms of marketability and in terms of not having the game appear old and bad you know and I think we have the I think that checks out because we know that Onimusha 3 was very well received and people seem to think very highly of it and i would say that it's the one that people if people single out one of these games um it as like memorable or good or a reason they're a fan some people might say one because it's like the one they played but i think three is like the 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 game that people remember and another thing like i keep uh, being indignant over the fact that no one knows who Takeshi Kinashiro is and he, that fact that he's in these games and he's like a kind of central figure in terms of the like famous actors who are in these games. Um, but obviously Capcom made a smart decision in casting Jean Reno because anytime Onimusha gets brought up it's like the first thing anyone says. It's like, oh yeah, it's that game with Jean Reno in it, right? And it's like, well, yes, it is. <laughs> it's a little bit more than that, but yes, that that is true. Like, I think stuff like that goes to show that Onimusha 3 resonated with a lot of people and people remember it. Even people who didn't maybe even play it. So would it have had that effect if it had been a like static camera angle game? Um, I think obviously we will never know. But I think making that change certainly helped the game feel more modern and current and exciting to a lot of people, probably. So it's 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 one thing to look at it now and say, oh, I wish it had been more, you know, different in however, whichever ways you might think of. But what would make for a more interesting game to come back to 20 years later, 15, 20 years later, may not be the same thing that makes for a successful game in its own time. Um, so, as a kind of, you know, looking back, um, I can wish certain things, but I can't fault it for not being what I would wish it to be decades removed. 
Um, <clears throat> how are my Gundams doing? Uh, I finished building the RG um, Astray, uh, but I kind of took a break before... Well, I, I sort of... I didn't apply the 8,000 stickers. Um, I didn't necessarily plan or decide to not do it or to put it off. It just so happens that I kind of stopped after constructing it and then I haven't gone back to do the stickers. Uh, I'll do that eventually, I guess. Uh, but I have all my... All the kits that I bought, I've built. And I'm not really... I'll be buying more. But I have a lot of other things to occupy my time with and I don't have a lot of spare cash to just burn on anything, believe it or not. Um... So basically, I'm, I'm not going to seek out more kits to buy, but I'll, if, if new stuff drops and it comes my way, if anything there interests me, I'll probably pick it up. So, kind of gone through the stuff I had, and we'll come back to it at some other time. Speaking of coming back to stuff, uh, let's, let's, let's return to Shin Onimusha, Dawn of Dreams, and uh, see how that gets on. Uh, oh yeah, no, I don't want to change that. There we go. <clears throat> I guess another thing, talking about <clears throat> the, um, the qualities of this game and what may or may not be well done or why it may uh, not quite live up to what was established. I think the... I don't even want to call it narrative, because it's not about the plot, per se. But what the game kind of does to invest you in what's going on, and how it presents its story and characters, it feels like it's quite deliberately um, light on context, but it feels like the game is kind of making assumptions about your level of investment without justifying that. This is loud. Oh yeah, I guess I didn't look at the archives to check if this got DMCA'd or not. I'm gonna say it probably does, because I'm pretty sure uh, an artist of uh, Hamas Aimi's caliber is gonna be extremely lit litigious. Um, maybe less so on Twitch, but certainly on YouTube. Um, I guess I'll just mute this bit, I guess, whatever. But even this intro, I suppose, is like also kind of weird. It's all like in-game. Well, it's not all in-game, but it's a weird mix of, of a little bit of pre-rendered CG and mostly these cutscenes, which are all, like, in-engine. Which brings me to another point, which is the kind of production value of this game. Where certain things seem very expensive, but a lot of things seem weirdly cheap. Uh, compared to some of the other games in the series. But to go back just quickly to what I was saying about the narrative stuff, like... I feel like the objectives that we are looking to achieve and... on a both smaller and larger scale... I spend a lot of the time not feeling like I have a very clear grasp on what we're aiming to do next why we're traveling from one location to the other. Like, we're in this little hub room, <laughs> and we go to the door, and just, it's just like, start next level. Because this game has, like, stages, by the way. It's not one world. Like, even two, of course, didn't have any kind of coherent open world, and neither did three, but uh, they were linear, but they didn't have levels. Uh, Alright, Bruno, that's cool. Just uh, feel free to watch and hang out. Uh, it's pretty funny. They, they didn't. It doesn't load the system data. 
But, well, I hope we didn't like lose our save file or anything, but I guess we, we had to load the save for it to set everything to English. But just in case that doesn't save somehow. Um, I'm not sure to change that. Um, there we go. Sawayama Dungeon. Yeah, like it's... You kind of... At least I'm finding myself very... Uh, not lost exactly, but like... Everything, we're just kind of arbitrarily shuffled from one level to the other. And stuff is kind of either loosely explained or I just... For whatever reason, can't bring myself to really give a shit. Uh, I felt like the other games did a better job of... You know, it might just be a matter of volume. Like, there's more dialogue, so there's... The crucial information gets lost. You know, the, the signal-to-noise ratio in terms of the information and dialogue might just be worse. Um, so for whatever reason... Like, and also from a, kind of a mechanical standpoint, I guess, you know... Um, some of the other games, you'd come across locked doors or locks or some kind of obstacles... And it's like, all right, I have to figure out a way around this obstacle. I need to get a key for this lock. Or what have you. But in this game, I feel like that doesn't happen as much because the level layouts are a little more... Um, hard to kind of parse. It's a little more... Um, there's kind of more going on. And they're they're complex enough to where I can't have a, an e as easy a mental grasp of the entire thing. Um... So I don't know. We are recruiting our party here, which again, like I'm, I'm finding myself having an incredible hard time just trying to summarize what was going on here. But we're playing as Soki, the main character. We teamed up with Jubei. She, I guess, is looking to. I don't know. We're we're out to. I don't know, burn cherry trees or whatever, <laughs> sabotage or do some shit uh, to find slash take revenge on um, Hideyoshi Toyotomi, the emperor. Jubei was also on the way to like get some kind of revenge or something. She was looking for someone and we had some kind of a common goal, so we teamed up. Tenkai, the monk, he, I guess, was like destined to recruit the next demon warrior in the battle against Genma and he found Soki so we're teaming up and currently we are in this cave system to find this prison cell where Roberto is locked up he's a boxer I guess I don't remember why. I guess he's just really strong and we need a strong guy, so we're going to recruit him. Um, we met up with, uh, what was her name? Okuni, the, the lady with the rifle. But she didn't want to join us. She wanted to shoot us. I guess we're going to have her join later. I don't know. Maybe we'll make some sense of this, but if not, we'll we'll keep fighting. Because for everything I might complain about with this game, the combat is pretty awesome. The, the overall feel of landing hits, extremely solid. And the, the Issen, the parries and counters, are like, mwah, fucking amazing feeling. So, the game's definitely not all bad. It's just weirdly worse than its predecessor in a lot of ways. That feels a bit unexpected. Whoa, I didn't need to do that. So we did save and we checked out before we, we cut the stream last time that on the other side of this door is a boss fight where we fight Roberto. Can I go in here? I cannot. So we know that he's inside here. Let's... Um... Let's see how this goes. Oh my god, Roberto. That's what the sign says. Okay, 
わかるかエステルガール・ソリア・グスタールメエスタベス・テラース・カルカルデボマタラフロイスノイテテスデテナルメフロイスという男を殺しに行くから邪魔をするなと言っているちょっと待てよとりあえずは俺たちと行動を共にしてくれシェルスモリルハプネスマリスだよマルディスシオノテンゴティエンポパラエスジネオブリオスエバタレス<笑>いや今のはなんとなく分かったこっちだって水強で助けたんじゃないんだ Yeah, another weird production value thing. All these cutscenes, they're not. I don't think they're done in the engine because they look kind of weird. They're certainly rendered in the game engine.、Uh, but I don't think it's running in real time. But in all these cinematics or cutscenes, there's facial animation. But when you have actual, like during gameplay, Dialogue scenes. The characters' faces are not animated at all. Which they were in the other games, so that's like kind of weird. I like the flashing when you hit enemies and shit. A lot of just super core stuff like that feels. Really sick. Can you do a down stab? Nope. Stand up, please. I'm down. Oh, that's the other thing. There's actual continues in this. So you don't have to load save files if you die, which is nice. Another, of course, really big difference, which is something that I think is a change that does make the game worse. It's not a. Like, it's definitely a, a bad thing.、Um, but it doesn't quite qualify as one of those, like, hard to put your finger on.、Uh, but the, the increased focus on, like, managing. Um, like loot and stats and like RPG elements. I'm not terribly fond of. It's up, Sinuj. I'll, I'll read your message in a second. I'll just do that, I guess. Oh, okay. Oh, that did kill me.、Okay. Being a little careless. Play this first. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I don't think. I, I think it's. The things that I dislike in this game, I don't think I dislike them because they're different. So I think.、Um, in some ways.、Um, it's just a game that has certain issues. But I also think for sure, like. Coming into it with certain expectations, or. Oh, I, what the fuck? That's not what I pressed. Um, having certain expectations obviously doesn't help, you know? If you expect or want something to be a certain way, or you just flat out, you know, you like the other games. Oh, okay, that didn't work. I was just like, can I just wail on him on his wake up? But it doesn't really work.、Uh, DJ BTS, this is the last of the kind of main line Onimusha games. Game came out in 2006. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. 
off. Oh yeah, you can like juggle dudes. It's really weird that that triggered the Isen. Or it seemed weird to me because... Yeah, I should do that. Okay. I did that on a previous pause. I didn't exactly understand how it worked. The guard crush Isen. But as you can probably hopefully see, like... Shit's pretty sick. So Issens are like way easier to do. Oh, I could have comboed off of that. Okay, yeah, no need to waste level two there because that still freezes and you can just connect with the combo afterwards. Like a lot of the, the nuances of the combat are like super well done. It just feels awesome. Yeah, I also realized that the weapon he's holding in the cutscene is not the weapon I was using, so like three hundred stuff. I'm doing okay, thanks for asking. I'm, uh, it's Monday. I, uh, Things turn around. But this morning I was not... I was not feeling it. I, um... Uh, unfortunately, uh, this past... These past two weekends... I really fucked up, and uh, had a terrible like sleep schedule. Um, okay. And not really gotten enough sleep, so I'm, I was a bit screwed up, but uh, I'm okay. <laughs> So Roberto just fucked off and left, I guess. そこ。島佐根どろか。石田三成の家臣島佐根かよ。こいつ。いや、大勢。今日の子は確実に死ぬぞ。But, I mean, yeah, like, I was surprised, actually, when I was looking into some stuff on this before I started playing. Uh, so this game had a Metacritic rating of... I forget what it was, but it was in the 80s. It might have been, like, 81 or 84 or something. And not to say that I, I feel like the game doesn't deserve it or whatever. Like, never how I think of those things. But given that... The way you seem to hear people talk about this game I would have expected um, a different kind of oh yeah okay so my AI partners keep like dying is he looking for me? yeah I guess he's fine yeah there's like side steps but they're somewhat awkward to do Oh, okay. okay. Alright, okay. We're going just into another boss fight here. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, so that's the other thing. Like, you have your sort of AI partners, but instead of being just this AI thing... Um, they... <laughs> I try to dash left, but I dash forward. They sort of require a little bit of babysitting. Cover a tiny bit of health. You can block, but it will guard crush. 
No, I didn't. Okay. You're doing better. Hard to parry. Oh, fuck. The dashing is like hard to do. My frames are okay. So you have to hold block and like tap the stick in a direction. Oh, he fucking OTG'd me. And you can only dash in four directions. So sometimes you end up tapping a sort of diagonal direction. And what's meant to be a left dash can be a forward dash. Dude! Why does he keep running right into the fucking flames? Okay, he'll recover a little bit of life right now. Oh, I fucking missed. I'm getting more help refills at least. But he doesn't even block. And then he runs straight into the flames, like. It doesn't... It doesn't matter that he's dead now. But that's, it's just like... Little shit like that that seems... Just makes for a more... Annoying experience. Sulkin take ice attack. Stop Sakon dead in his tracks. Sakon's bloodthirsty rage shifted to incredible pain as he grabbed his head and ran away. And this, like, still image with some text also doesn't feel... Super exciting. However, a heavy gate came crashing down behind Sakon, sealing the pair off in the dungeon. <laughs> Soki and Tenkai were both left with no way out of the cell. But then... Hideyasu,そこにいるのね。おはず。どうしてもあなたに聞きたいことがあるの。Hideyasu,あなたから上がってきて。三成様。何です。ルイス・フロイス様がお越しですが。お通しなさい。は。相変わらず慣れませんの。ルイス・フロイスという呼ばれ方。慣れてもらわねばと思ります。その名こそが大事な隠れ身のですからね。して、京都第
黒き鬼のさ、再来という例のどのようなものが来ますかとやら楽しみでございます。Yeah, Only is Broki.、Uh, That's、uh, Soriki. Ophelia Karawa. Nanika Rendaku Arima Sindishaka. Kawalaki, Hideyoshi Toboto de Kanshu, Suzuke de Iruto Dokoto. Hm. Sweeto a Kaku Dori, Susun de Iruno de Sne. Yui. Waga Arujino Hoshiva Genmajino Keshu Nite. Mas Masono Hikari o Takameru Koto de Shu. <laughs> yeah, we don't get Demon Nobunaga, but I guess we get Norio Wakamoto doing a good villain voice, so. ヒデヨシ様はあの桜で何をしようとしているのなぜ人のように見えるのなぜ鳴き声が聞こえてくるのヒデヤスあなたはそれを知っているのでしょうあの桜に関して全ての指揮を執っているのは石田三成そして三成
sectioned off like this too. Like there's, um, you know, you have the map and it's it's one. Well, okay, never mind. Oh, okay. So until I actually collect a map, the map screen doesn't even do anything. I guess it's kind of weird. Like you have to have this little sparky thing to indicate that this is a door you can open or interact with. Like, that wasn't a thing in the other games. But it was still easier to see where you could go, because... Uh, I don't know, there's just, like, a lot of minor and major stuff. I feel like. Like that. That gives this game, like, the navigation feels different. Than it ever did. It's just something about moving around feels sort of clunky, I guess. I don't know. So... Pushing blocks definitely seems like it's a mechanic. But I haven't figured out how you're supposed to be able to do it. Uh, oh yeah, you don't have a uh, ranged attack, so... Because you can clearly see there's like... Right, she won't... Shoot other ones, I guess. Like, there's trails on the ground. Not gonna help. I don't know, maybe I need another character who can do it. I don't fucking know. Are we going in here? I guess. Warrior's coat. Oh yeah, these are like crafting materials, I think. Yeah, we can change. She should have a shit ton of points. Yeah. So, so far, putting three points into attack has unlocked something for every character. So, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Letting gun build up charge. Okay, sure. Pressing L and R to like swap pages, and I. Forget about it. Adding points to, to the vacuum stuff is like. You already absorb souls way faster than in the other games. I don't know about that, but. I guess I should, um, I should level up her armor so she can equip more stuff. But yeah, this whole stuff, like, knowing what to put points into becomes so weird when there's potentially so many more weapons and shit. Okay, it's not really going up much for a while. No, I can't. But when you reach level 10, you uh, you gain another equipment slot. That's what I was looking for, but I will. You have the equip screen also. Like, the menus are just more 
funky. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I guess I, sh I need to move this around because he uh, he's like not over level, but he's more level higher level than her. So if she is to catch up, she might as well take this. And I guess the other characters are not getting XP now. So you might want to actually... Oh. See, the, like having to think in those terms, to think about those kinds of... Like having to consider those things. It's just not something that adds... I mean, you could argue that it adds a layer of strategic decision making. I suppose, but it's not an enjoyable one to me. Because it's just more shit to, to... It detracts from the game to me. It, it detracts from the parts of the game that I think is fun. I didn't play Onomusha 2 thinking like, oh, this is a cool game, but I wish it had more management. I wish I had to fuck around in menus and allocate points distribute resources. Saving is like less of a concern because you can continue. There were definitely yellow gems, but I guess they disappeared. Oh, where'd you go? There you go. Uh, elevator technology. See, there's like so many places like this. You're in a small room with a bunch of identical doors. Just like even the idea of navigating this. It even looks okay though. Okay. Good. Still no map. Must this might be rough. <laughs> Puzzle box. Okay. Four moves. Okay, it's it's like it's leveling up here. Say so there's Okay, never mind, yeah. Yeah, I figured, like, it's not gonna be worth leveling up her whatever weapon she just gets. Yeah, I go from 20 to 32. Doesn't have magic, but... Still probably... It's true appeal becomes apparent with use. Type slug, type normal. Yeah, I was gonna say, I guess she doesn't have, like, combos, because... Soki, I have, like, two weapon types so far. And they're distinguished by uh, type, four combo or three combo. Ooh, five combo. So that's actually a different one. That would explain why it's lower damage, I guess. And these are like whatever bonuses you get from leveling it up. But I don't know what level max is. Because I haven't leveled anything to level max yet. But who knows?
One F to machine load. Okay, maybe we just need both for the machine to work. Ladder? Lack the key. <laughs> I would need more strength to move this stubborn device. Okay, so I guess we need a different character probably. That's probably Roberto then. Oh, maybe Roberto is, is strong enough to push blocks also. That I guess that I could see that. Labor's been inserted. It won't work. Yeah, okay. Will I ever okay. So like finicky. Oops! Oh yeah. I guess there's like a big delay before each shot. Wait, is this door locked? Another ladder. Yeah, her design is pretty cool. I'm not in love, but it's pretty alright. Like, the character design overall, I think, is... Yeah. Definitely decent, and certainly, like, the artwork, the, the like, the Bengus artwork that they even use. Like, yeah. for the, the dialogue portraits. Like, they're gorgeous. But even so, like, I, I just feel like, I wish I could explain it, but there's like some aspect of the character design that makes it not necessarily more bland or generic. Uh, it might be the opposite, that there's like, it's a little, finally, uh, plottered almost, that the designs come across to me as, as less uh, memorable and kind of distinct in a way. I like them, but again, like... Um, I feel like there are other characters that I could... Like, for me, the kind of litmus test is like, could I draw them? Not to say I could draw the characters from one or two perfectly. But these I would like have to use extensive reference I mean th that's absolutely true of other character designs in other games that I'm in love with so it's I know it's not a it's not that I'm trying to look for things to complain about it's more that like there is something about it that makes these character not quite connect in the same way and that's the best thing I can think of to maybe help explain it Cut that rope, but I need something to reach it. Okay. I guess I can't cut it with a fucking cannonball. The rope is just too far away. Just cannot be cut. Alright, well, let's go in here. No, let's not. Okay. Do I change characters? I guess I need a, a boxer here, maybe. That's the other thing. Like, every stage so far has had a bunch of these things. We're like, oh, I need a different character. I need fucking Funky Kong to open this or whatever shit. And to me, that just feels kind of annoying. But because, even again, like, that's... Um... 
adds a layer of management that I don't find very fun. And it feels almost... Uh, maybe the other locked door we can open now. But we can't go through this door again now because the elevator is already... Well, unless... Mind of Resident Evil every time you get a key. Like, yeah, I mean, there's there's elements of how the levels are designed that are, still retain a tiny bit of that sort of DNA from the early games, but it's... Oh, yeah, I can't go back in here, I guess, now. Unless I can get the elevator to come down by activating it or something. Oh, was the... Oh, see, I wanted to... Kind of looked like there was a thing here, but that's probably for jumping across. Yeah, I can't interact with this. Anymore. And every room looks the same, every door looks the same, everything is like claustrophobic. I don't feel like I'm lost. But at the same time, like, I feel like I could, I could very easily, like, miss, like, accidentally skip trying to go into a room or something, just based on my misplaced belief that I had already gone in there or something. I mean, I tried, or I guess maybe I have to use a different weapon. I mean, shooting the rope was literally the first thing I tried. Not cool. I'm like trying out different attacks here. Yeah, because I can't activate the elevator. It doesn't have magic, but she has a little special move. I strongly doubt that the, the weapon... Well, maybe... No, that doesn't make sense. I was going to say, maybe I need to swap to a different character. Uh, but no, I can't... The mirror that you would use to swap characters, I can't access. So... Well, she did this one. So. Yeah. Well, I guess I didn't necessarily fully explore everything outside. Yeah, there's like a door that I didn't go through. It's like, yeah, the charge thing. You could, I wouldn't necessarily have put the points to unlock that move. So that's not, it's not going to require us to do that. This should be a yeah a little uh, under okay we can well okay we can swap characters here I suppose if need be. Because I was thinking maybe Tenkai has a spear. Because when so when they like there's no visual indication for how long you need to charge. not be surprised but her damage is pretty shit. Oh. Let's try this jump completely there. He fucking died. Oh my god. Useless. So basically you can heal and give them health back. 
But if you leave the room, they just sort of get a little life back. It's shut tight. Okay, so I can't go there either. Well, that means I did explore everything. Well, let's, I guess, swap characters. That's all I can think of, really. Let's so now I can just make him stand there and block and gain health back. Should have enough to level up, yeah. No, wrong button. Once you get to its level 5, plus 20% means that it's going to make up for a lot of its lesser power. <clears throat> plus it's a 5 pipe, 5 hit combo weapon, I guess. Means it is a totally different, like it doesn't just add or remove one hit from the combo, it just is a totally, like, the regular 4 hit type is just the regular sword but the three hit type is basically like the hammer or clubs from the previous games <clears throat> where you have like a super heavy weapon so the five i guess means it's a very light rapid kind of weapon i'm actually kind of somewhat interested in that so at 515 even if it starts with 100 points level is going to be more so i can't yeah i can't get it to level five but i can bring it up a little bit yeah the attack it's actually going up fairly rapidly but here's the confusing part it looks like this is equipped now right but then when we go back to like the equip menu it's not actually equipped <laughs> so it didn't actually change what was equipped yeah have something more Ooh, steel ring that increases attack power by five i was kind of about to give this ring to her that i equipped with soki but might as well do this uh right i wanted to change characters but I can, so it's funny part, like, you you don't re regain health by just standing there blocking. But if you change your character to the AI, they, they will do that. So, like, I can stand like this, nothing happens. But if I swap and tell her to do that, she will gain health back. It feels like kind of a strange system. I mean, it's kind of nice, I suppose. It's, it's user-friendly, but it's a little strange. Um, alright, let's, uh... I can't, I see. Okay. She's the only one available. Move and add, okay. That seems to imply that you could maybe have more than two. I guess I don't, I haven't seen what that would look like. Okay. So I guess you don't actually, you can't recover more than half health, it looks like. Yeah. Maybe she can shoot that rope. Who knows? Is this, the, this is probably the wrong door. No, that was the right door. Okay. Because there's no, like, aiming or anything. You just have the lock on. Always these kind of boxy little hallways. Strong impact might prop it open for a split second. Ah! 
That doesn't. Okay, I have to. Jesus Christ. Okay. In fairness, your key, temple door key. Um, I had to walk up to it and, and, and interact with him for the text to show. Hey, are you gonna like help? No, I didn't start anything. Like this. What? What? Did I actually shoot? Oh yeah, that's the launcher, right? Ah oh, shit, the orb. seals okay it's not what I expected but sure well, let's try to explore a floor at a time even though the ladders don't necessarily mean we're I think that's the other side of the same door probably Soon. Need more strength. But did say that when I tried it with him too, right? Yeah. So that's the thing. Um, I don't expect us to get access to Roberto later in this level. I assume he's the one that has strength. Because there would only be. I mean, I'm sure it's not Jubei, and that leaves only him and Tenkai, and between the two, I don't think Tenkai is supposed to be the strong one. But basically, there's stuff that can be found or done that um, requires us to revisit this level. We have to go back. So you just kind of have to replay levels. Which, I don't know, it just feels like... Uh, artificial extension of sorts. Are you gonna do anything? I guess she isn't. Oh, she can swing over, I see. Yeah. It wasn't standing close enough, there we go. Like, there's no... The AI will never, like... Um, walk, like, unprompted walk to near where they need to go for interactions. There's money in this game too, because there's a shop in between levels. I think I probably had come across those little look like demon seals before. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the heck? I was gonna say, I'm assuming that's not the puzzle box. Uh me, uh, I'm gonna tweak the SCART cable here. That was a new one. Oh, ah, 
Don't tell me I'm having... Well, I guess it might be loose on the other end or something. looked like it was drooping a bit, but it didn't seem like I could actually make it sit any better. <clears throat> it has me worried that it's gonna like droop over time. Um. Uh, okay. What the actual fuck? Did I... Something with this that is just... Making shit fully freak out? Well, that's not gonna help, is it? That's a weird coincidence, I don't know. Well, that's also not gonna help. No, okay, that's... Okay, looks like it's settled down. because it like I kept getting tricked into doing the wrong thing multiple times. Okay, let's see what we got. S general ring. Lift 20%. The magician's ring. Acolyte is the same thing. Okay. Yeah, because it has the same, like, visual. So this is the exact same effect, but more powerful. Yeah, it's like the chess piece. Or shogi piece, rather. I have, like, um... Increases damage on various... Specific types of attack. leveled up. Yeah, at least once. She might have leveled up more. No. Just not leveled up at all. Okay. I guess I don't know if XP and souls are the same thing or if you level up from something else that isn't red souls. Save now. <laughs> so in uh, in Onimusha 3, I kept getting tripped up because every time I pressed save, I did this and then pressed left and then I pressed circle again to confirm. Uh, but in that game, it actually defaulted to yes, so I would hop over to no. But in this game, it does default to no. <laughs> so it's a good thing I was never able to train my muscle memory to actually do it correctly in the previous game. Because that means I'm doing it correctly now. <laughs> actually, what is, was it say if I try to track? I'm sure someone could get through with some explosives. It's so specific.
That's gonna piss like really annoying at least. Like when you spend a lot of money on hardware and shit starts not working, that's very frustrating. お前<笑> We came across this guy before, but I don't remember the context at all. <laughs> Oh, so she's just like crying in a corner or something, I guess. Oh yeah, right, we changed the wind weapon so we don't actually have to freeze the special. That makes sense. I, okay. Yeah, that's the other thing. I turned block. Didn't work. What's up, Trap? Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, crap viewers. We're continuing our exploits here in Shin Onimusha Dawn of Dreams. I like that you can combo after. Oh. Try to block, I'm dead. Yeah, after you land the Issa, and you can just combo afterwards. If you remember that you are able to at least. So that's it, like, for some reason I find it easier It's an after magic sometimes, also. I'm not sure if it's a timing thing or, or what, but... Just mashing. Comet generally feels fucking incredible, though. So I was able to block there, but a lot of the time... Well, that's kind of partially what I wanted to use this weapon. <laughs> sick. Uh, have a quicker weapon. I have to find myself a little more likely to not be locked into an animation. But actually be able to... See, like, you sort of commit. So by the time he does the move and you can react to it, it's already too late. I'm holding block, but you can't actually block. Which, I mean, it's not like the game's fault or anything. It's me not blocking, but... Or, you know, putting myself in that situation. And he's got iframes on the pocket sand. I do have healing items, by the way. Oh, fuck's sake. I'm just like uh, wanting to see if I can figure out the fight. Well, that was worth a lot. I was stunned for that, so I just took more damage anyway. Yeah. 
Dude, I'm fucking still stunned. Okay. Yeah, I still took damage, even though I was... Like the special, the twirly attack meant that I was... Oh, I'm dead. Uh, I had like armor frames, I guess. Like, I didn't... I only could hit stun. Oh, yeah, I can launch him. He even has like juggles and shit. Can I get out of this quicker? Did I? That was a parry, okay. Like the, the visual feedback on the regular blocking is more intense in this game. It's harder to distinguish from a regular... Between a... Oh, wait! I might... Yeah. It's fucking down attack. It's like a 20% damage combo. This guy is rough. Night lock on. All well, iframes are crazy. It's the exact same thing. I wasted all my meter. That's okay. I'm trying to go for parry. I'm. Oh, okay. I do like the combat a lot in this game. This just happens to be an unusually difficult opponent. Did he whistle? Yeah, he did. I'm blocking the camera when I'm attacking him, so it's really hard to see when he's... If there even is, like, a tell that he's about to do the flip, can't really see what it is. That works at least. So there is at least a gap there to parry. Okay, maybe that is the strat. Let him hit once, and then I parry the second hit. Too greedy there. Does it kind of feel like you can buffer it? I don't know. I'm like suspiciously consistent in that. Alright. See, once I got the hang of that, that, that shit was actually really fun. Okay, my scarred cable seems intact for now. Let's hope we don't get weird disconnection issues. Down attacks are weird in this game. They seem kind of hard to pull off. But usually, you can uh, you can kind of hit with anything. Like, the game is a lot less strict. In that regard. Um, but it seemed to me like he just... Essentially, that he has full iframes when he's knocked down. See, once the, when the screen flashed like that, it like... What? There was like a... Like the video cut out. I wonder, is it some weird shit if it's like transitioning too suddenly or something? I don't know. I'm gonna take a look at it in the break, see if I can prop up 
Uh, yeah, I, I had some like cable disconnection issues or video disconnection issues at least. So I'm assuming it's the physical issue. Um, so I'm going to see if I can prop because the, the SCART cable, the connection on the back of the console, it's like it was sort of drooping. Uh, it's just because the connector is like kind of long in the cable. I don't know. So I was like thinking if I can prop it up. Maybe I can, even if that's not related to the issue, maybe it helps, <laughs> uh, like in the long run, just as a preventative measure. I will see. Can't get no orbs. Oh, there was a chest though. It's in there. Medicine level three. So the map in Onimusha 3 was like weirdly unhelpful, but here it's just because, it, I don't know, and the funny thing in that game, it, it put everything around like, so you could enter a door and it would like have a little arrow to a totally different part of the screen and uh, it would do the same thing with stairs and stuff. So if you had multiple levels, it would be on the same screen next to each other. But here it's kind of the opposite where if you're going up or down levels, it's literally just on top of each other on the map. So it's not exactly easy to parse. <clears throat> I guess we came up through there. Wait, yeah, there we go. I was gonna say these aren't doors, but yeah, there's a ladder over there. Well, let's go up, I guess. Did she climb up here? I guess this is the guy we came here for? I'm immediately like forgetting why we're going to places. Sorry, what? Oh, it was a trap door, I guess. What it all could occur? Kionite Daigo no Hanami or Hirakaneva Naranu is so good. She me, Imo, Anatagata no Otea in its key of the door, Dikimasin. Good old dear Sama. I know the Butua, Sumara, she did get tiny on that this gun. Still, give us you. Does he have like Genma arms or something? That's why he's really strong. Hideyoshi-sama, <laughs> I guess climbing up the ladder again is just out of the question. All right. Zombie alien plan 42 is alive. Also, yeah, some dialogue just isn't voiced. Big house plant. Wow, he looks dorky. Somehow even more than in the actual game. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, yeah, let's actually. I suppose. Oh, you know what? Oh, never mind. Okay, I was like, oh, I can swap to him and have Toki heal, but I can't actually swap.
Special attacks is kind of shit because it's like slower than attacking. Seven to all out of ten. Oh, there's like enemies here, I guess. What's going on? Oh, just heal up. Oh, he's dead. Okay. I was just like, what? What have happened to the other guys? Like, oh, he's been dead for a while. That like trigger the arm to swipe. The camera's so like tight as well. He's wiggling, yeah, okay. He's wiggling he, it, she, I don't know. I guess it's a she probably. Wiggling their head before swiping with the arm. See, like that thing again. The first time uh, the signal like cut out. He just absorb health. How did he come back? Uh, the first time it, it was when I entered like the puzzle box. A few other times it seems like it was related to uh, bright flashes or like like it's not a physical issue of the cable coming loose. A little perplexed, to be honest. Oh yeah, he's... I was like, why is he just standing there? It's like, oh yeah, right, I told him to. I realize I'm not damaging the boss, but I want to kind of... ...manage this shit a little bit. I guess that's what this game's all about. Oh, I died. Of course. Because you have to, like, be up close. It, it's really hard to do anything and see anything at the same time. <laughs> Oh yeah, I still can't speak. I'm like trying to figure out basically if I can block. Oh, that's new, okay. Sick. The poison. Can the poison kill? I don't think it can. Oh, I guess I don't know. My... Yeah, but it seemed like it could. Holy shit, the range? I thought you just swipe when you're like right there. What is the plot? I don't know. Uh, it's not Nobunaga is not a figure in the plot, um, but his successor. You can see a, a very brief synopsis. Um, the main thrust of it, I guess, is that Hideyoshi Toitome is. Uh, Recruiting Genma troops and uh, this character um, 
has demon powers for some reason, which seems they don't exactly know why either. But it's like totally normal to them. And we're gonna make use of them and recruit some other people along the way. Dude! I held block, but I was like pushed into the swipe attack somehow. Weirdly confusing stuff. Like these little cocoons just feel like weird. I'm wasting busy work. Covers the fucking entire room also. Let's try to swap weapons here. Uh, I can try the ice thing again, I guess. So he, of course, he's got nothing equipped. Can I? Well, oh, never mind. I was gonna say, can I level him up? But I would need a mirror to do that. Fuck you, I'm not. Uh, so, for instance, if I were to freeze the boss, or if I were to hit the boss with the magic, would it freeze them? Like, no damage for some reason? See, like that hit him. You know, when he was on the ground. That would never have happened. It kind of goes both ways. Like, you can hit with regular attacks, but even the down stabs, they won't just whiff. Simply because they. Oh, he's Just as I. I tap the pad direction. To make him defend just as he does. Block. Okay. No! Got. It seems like it's blockable. That's like the information. Good thing I was out of range. Alright, he just got up. See, the. I got a little weird video artifact there, right at the screen, like basically flash white. It's not seen. Going to go. Or. Maybe it is. I don't fucking know. I was waiting for the arm swipe. I was not expecting the voice. So, Poison Cloud just gonna prevent me from attacking together. I can't actually do the team. Maybe he needs his weapon over there. It definitely helps having him sort of take care of more of these dudes. But yeah, he was blocking, so. Oh, okay. Why did the level 3 not freeze him if the level 2 did? That's Whoa, what the fuck was that? 
What? Did you hit the floor and everything fell over, or what just happened? Surely that was not a swipe. Um, it's getting weirdly confusing sometimes. I got hit by both attacks. I don't want to have to redo this, so I'll just heal. Blocking like a full second before he hit, but I was still in recovery on my combo. So. I can kind of. Yeah, she did the weird full screen attack. There we go. <laughs> I just wanted to squeeze in these last few hits before she swiped. I think it was just like, she was just about to do it too. Precious orbs, I want them. Enough with the cutscenes. Never mind, we beat the level. So why does the, why does the boss drop orbs? If you literally cannot get them. The stage just ends. That's funny, like, sh Well, Hatsu was just removed from the list. Place of Roberto, all right. Nuestra misión es detener a Hideyoshi y a esos condenados bastardos de Genma. There's the plot. Luis Flores, que andas buscando. ¿Quieres que luche? ¿A nuestro lado? Necesitamos el poder de tu cofre. In those buff arms. ¿Sabes lo de mi cofre? Ana, Aoni. Tenkai, y coco no coto va pera pera saber del de. Nunca he tocado te aquí nací de esca. Ano si raga ata más amaba. Bueno, pero te lo has pierdo. Tan solo voy detrás de Luis Flores. No esperes que obedezca tus órdenes. Está bien. Soki, Jube. Roberto, Zeito, no vale, vale, todo, 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 Purchase book. Hmm. Did I get that previously? I don't know. All right. Um, let's take a short break. I will uh, see if I can do anything to help um, with the weird video issue that's cropping up here and there. Uh, and then we'll. Well, we're going to hop into the next level eventually, but we've got some management to do here first, because that's what you do in this game. And our gear and stats and whatnot. Uh, but I'll be back in a little bit. Um, see you guys then.
All right. So I realized when I was looking over my table situation that there was one link in the chain that I completely overlooked when I was just trying to rejigger the cables and see if I, um, if there was a loose plug or something because I've got the cable running from my PS2 into a SCART switcher, which I'd forgotten about. From my SCART switcher to my retro tank, from my retro tank to my capture card, and from my capture card to my PC and monitor. Um, <clears throat> so it could very well have been the cable that went from the PS2 and in the splitter end, or um, not splitter, the switch, uh, the SCART switcher that was loose. So hopefully just Tugging a bit on that will uh, will make things work better. Knock on wood. All right, so this is where you can get extra lore about everything. Oh, she's talking. <laughs> I was like, who are you talking about? Because that description seems to describe Sulky more than anyone. The other guy's like, got like orange hair. Soki's got blonder hair than that guy. Hmm. Hey, what's up, Malona? <clears throat> what did I just... Is that a thing? It's like, ah, uh, see, there's like... I feel like this kind of stuff was kind of interesting in 2, but here I'm just like so checked out. I just can't bring myself to caring. Flame blade, alright. Merchant stamp. Earth blade. Yes, yeah. Samurai's ring. Okay, so that's gonna give what? What was that? Plus five damage or pack or whatever? Sure. Wait, hang on. Okay, we just made that. I just realized that I think. Oh no, but we have two fangs. Nice, so I could make another. Oh, this is one on for. Flame blade. How's the game? It's uh, underwhelming, I think, is the best way I can put it. It's not bad, exactly, but it's definitely my least favorite Onimusha game. And I'm not alone in that. This game was not received all that well. I, I mentioned before, I, I'd seen... I didn't look it up, per se, but it popped up when I was looking the game up on Moby Games. Uh, just to get some, some basic info. <clears throat> and it had a Metacritic rating of 81 or 80-something. 80 uh, which, based on the game's reputation, I expected that to be lower. Um, but that's the thing too, like, I was excited to play this because I wasn't at all expecting it to, like, um, uh, I wasn't expecting its reputation to necessarily reflect what my experience with the game would be because I've had many games, I, I've revisited many games, um, not even revisited, but, like, I've played many old games that I feel like I'm having a more charitable opinion of than the general consensus at the time. Um, and in some cases, the, the opposite. Like, my, my, my opinions and experiences don't always, or even often, align with general consensus. So, it's... Um, it being poorly received didn't, to me feel like a reason to assume that it would be a bad game or that I would not enjoy it. Um, not knowing any specifics about why people may not have liked it much. But when I was playing the other Onimusha games, I got the impression just from hearing people mention some things and the way people talked about it in chat, obviously incredibly anecdotal, but <clears throat> it gave me the impression that maybe it wasn't a bad game, but maybe it was just a departure, enough of a departure uh, from the, the established sort of conventions of the other games that fans of the series in particular didn't take to it. 
And that's one of those things where the game might be good, but if the people who are loud about being fans of Onimusha didn't like it, then that's what you would hear about it. Uh, yeah, we played all three of the other games before this. We've been playing them all through in order over the past month or two. But what I'm finding is that both, in many ways, this is like a departure. Some of the core of the combat is like similar enough, but it's actually like not even that is all that similar. Like it's kind of different. The camera and like the, you know, the, um, how, it, how the gameplay sort of feels, the map layout, like there's very few things that are not different. Like this whole thing that we're in between stages because the game has stages and you can revisit previous ones. Um, you have a party, which was sort of kind of a little bit of a thing in two, but not in this way. This game has like a bunch of new RPG style mechanics with loot and gear and stats. Um, the way the story is told is a bit different. You have these like text, like unvoiced um, um, dialogue bits and stuff. Um, the tone of it seems a little bit different, but I, th that's the thing I was mentioning too. Like we first meet Soki in the beginning. He's like kind of arrogant, a little flippant. And then Jubei is, well, before Jubei, there's this thing. Um, been used to revisit stages. Um, and obviously, like a character like this with this kind of design, um, immediately just feels a little different from something you would see in the other games. At least as like a player, like a you know, not a player character, but like you know, the closest we get is the weird. Uh, bonus stage creature but even he has doesn't have this blatantly sort of cartoony look um but then after the the first of the other characters we sort of meet is Jubei and she's also you know she's kind of a kid she has like this you know She's just a sort of a different character than you would see in the other games. So the first like three characters sort of in our sort of party are these characters that are a little bit comedic or just, you know, compare them to Samanosuke or especially Jubei from 2. He's like ultra stoic, super just boring even in how self-serious and sort of brooding he is. So, it's not that I mind a bit of levity, that's fine. Good, even. But it, the tone is just like shifting in a completely different direction. And now, of course, we have Tenkai and Roberto, and now it feels a little more balanced. Because I was saying that earlier, like, we got these... It's like front-loaded with the goofiness. But if we have other characters who offset that with a more stoic approach then some of these other th elements may stand out as a bit of comic relief. Like, I like Jubei. I don't mind her as a character. But when she defines almost the entirety of the interactions we see between the characters, things take on a different feel than we really see in the other games. Um. Uh, but yeah, Mexican Detective... It, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, but <laughs> absolutely, the game is a little more, like, in the broader sense of when we say anime to mean, in my opinion, like, the sort of RPG tedium as well. Um, because there's more of that, for sure. The game is anime. Yeah, this is the guy from the other games. So he's like the shopkeeper now, I guess. Don't yeah. have never find anything that needs appraisal. So we can buy a flame sword. This is kind of what I wanted to check. I wanted to double check that I don't have one. If I'm going to craft it. It's the most expensive weapon. Yeah, okay. It's a heavy weapon. Earth arrival. I can't buy any boxing gloves or anything. 
But see, like, there's so many of these items that to try to min-max, like, which ones you want and how, like... All of that feels so, like, ugh. I don't want to have to bother with that, really. Uh, I mean, yeah, personally, my favorite at this point in time, at least, is Onomusha 2. And I think I had, like, some person... Um, say that 2 were their favorite, but most people definitely seem to be in agreement that 3 was their favorite. Um, if, I had pla if I had played these as they came out, it's not at all unlikely that 3 would have been my favorite. Uh, but coming to them now, I think... Um, even though I appreciate some of the mechanical things like the three sort of streamlined and made like three isn't a worse game than two really um, but two had more far more interesting and compelling idiosyncrasies specifically in terms of some visual designs with creatures and, and uh, locations and, and stuff but also um, some of the main characters even stuff like that when you upgrade your armor it you know, the character sort of changes appearance. And technically that is true in Onimusha 3, but the way it's done is so utterly half-assed. So there's there's more like cool shit into. Um but specifically the execution of the pre-rendered background stuff I thought was really super well done and awesome too. And obviously that's not a thing in three or four. Um But this game, I don't know, this is um a perfectly decent game in its own right, but it gets rid of some stuff from the other games, sort of. Mostly it adds stuff, but none of what they add... Um, uh, none of what it adds makes the experience any more um, fun. <laughs> uh, it, it only serves to add, like, tedium and making things more, like, take longer. Like, that's the other thing. Like, this game is on two discs, which has me somewhat nervous that it's going to be like super long because so far each game has been longer than the last um which you know which i'm already like not i already don't consider a good thing but when it's also when i'm already having less fun with it <laughs> and it's longer uh that's not a great combination Earth Rifle 25. Uh, so again, like I have to like, uh, what, which equip, like, what do I have? Then I have to go here and just like sort of check. Oh, I guess I picked up these. Now what's up, Gigman? Yes, this game is on to DVD. Digital versatile disc discs. So I've been uh, using that. Okay. Oh, now I gotta put all the points in his armor so that I can give him two equipment slots. I guess have to is a bit strong, but I would like to, I, I suppose. Okay, so it does appear that characters level up. I think XP is shared between everyone. Because otherwise Tenkai would probably be a lower level. Yeah, Jubei. Like, we haven't used her in a while. But another thing I... An assumption I made is apparently not true in that... These items are still equipped... Actually, that's not... My assumption may actually still be... Well, whatever. We'll see when we can swap between characters. AP 37. That's pretty powerful. Yeah, I leveled it up quite a bit. This is exactly what I mean. Like, having to keep track of equipment... Yeah. For one character okay. is already something you didn't have to worry about in the other games. But you have to do it for four characters currently, and we still have a fifth to join the party. 
Uh, it looks like I can uh, forge the flame sword. Special, more powerful. Because in the other games, you have three weapons and that's it. And they have different uses, and you level them up. But here, like, you, you might have twice that per character. So there's way more different things that you, like, as far as which thing you put your points into, it used to be three weapons, maybe an armor thing, and maybe another thing. So like five, let's be generous and say six things. Now you have six weapons plus an armor per character. So that's maybe not six weapons altogether, but let's say we went from five things to 20 things or somewhere between 20 and 30. That's like a pretty massive difference. Um, and also, like, swapping weapons, the differences between them seem so much... I even have to worry about, do I want to buy them? Do I want, to, like, do I want to spend money on getting this item when I don't know how different it's going to be? And whenever I... You know, when I... If I buy it, how different is it going to be? Or am I going to spend all this money... And then at the beginning of the next stage, I open a chest and there's a better weapon in there. Like, it's stuff like that that I think... I can see how some people would find this interesting if you like the types of games that have a lot of this stuff. To me, it detracts so much from the sort of action gameplay of this. I, I prefer... Not once in the process of playing through the previous three games did I ever feel, man, I wish I could find a shop so I could choose between five different weapons to save up and buy one of them. Like, it doesn't, you know... It doesn't add anything. Nothing positive, anyway. And then you have, like, the all these elemental resistances and bonuses from leveling up. And then you have stats. The characters have stats that you level up, too. That's never been a thing previously so I guess I'll I'll, I'll craft a flame sword uh, we can't buy any gloves or anything but Roberto already had a different club but I have to like memorize so this starts at level 23 um, uses less meter like all about special moves basically I don't know if the AI is going to be very confident about using, but... So... Darkness and fire. So it already is kind of a fire. Well, dark primarily, I guess. But I don't know how much I got... Okay. I mean, I'm not spending the money on all that much stuff. I guess we can we'll try it. And buy multiples. Well, I guess he only has one in stock, but... You can ask for multiples, which I don't know would help. Buying this when she's technically not even in my party yet seems like a bit of a waste. I don't know how this compares to her other normal what, rifle, though. Right, so yeah, this also like, well, I guess I would have to keep track of which elemental type each enemy is to even know which enemies this is effective against. And I suppose I'm expected to go into the equip menu to swap depending on which enemies I'm fighting. I'm not going to do that, ever. But in, in addition to not wanting to bother with that system, it makes me feel like I'm sort of missing out or it's like I should be. I, it's, I don't like it. Priestly garb. Wrong button. So 
Sorry about the white flashes. You can see it on my face and my on the cab, like how much how bright this shit is. <laughs> it's like legit hurts my. I have to like look away because it hurts my eye to look at it. it hurts my eyes. Well, my little OBS window on the other screen, a little thumbnail. It's like even that is a little uncomfortable to look at, but <laughs> I can do it at least. All right, there we go. Level ten. Defense minus 10. Let's get it to level 3, I guess. If I can. It's not, I'm not going to be able to. No, 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 okay, yeah, it starts at level 1, of course. Yeah, never mind, I'm an idiot. Level 3. So there, here's what I mean. Like, all this crap that you have to, like... Figure out how to balance the your point spending. So let's try. Actually, I don't. I think you can. What does you Yeah, I mean, like anyone can craft stuff, I guess. So I'm assuming. Oh shit! You do get different stuff. Ah. Oh. Okay, so some of the generic stuff, I guess you could kind of well, this craft. So wait, so I'm crafting flame sword. Does that craft a new weapon for her? Because I had a flame sword that's a Soki weapon. I know. Yeah, he doesn't speak Japanese, dumbass. Uh. See, that, that even makes me, like, second-guess everything about crafting. How do I even know what I want? I don't even... I get the name of the item, but I don't know. I mean, I guess everything that has, like, an Indian-sounding name, like, that's probably his weapons, right? But he already has, like, a couple of weapons I've barely tried, so... I guess... I'm not in a hurry. Uh, then you just walk up to this door. Are you going? Yes, yes. Oh, fuck, I just realized I forgot to level up our stats. Oh, we'll run into one of those mirrors soon enough. We can do it from there. Like this scenes, these scenes. They, there's something about them that feel like so generically presented. Uh, there's no facial animation. They all take place in the same location, so each one of these scenes is completely indistinguishable from the other. And there's... I feel like there's a lot more dialogue in this game than in the others. So there's just a lot more. I mean, the game itself brags on the back of the box about the increased volume of CG cutscenes and event scenes and dialogue and whatever. And I don't think that's a good thing in itself either. This game just has a weird... And again, this may be... Oh, actual CG cutscene. The first one says the intro. But this shit I'm, I'm into. Because this is actually visually exciting.
Page seven. That stuff looks awesome. And then you have these slideshows with text, no voice. Head of the party lies Fushimi Castle. Inside, Hideyoshi is joining in the Daigo Blossom Festival. Soki and the others plan to put a stop to the celebrations. The party sets out from the Akech too, each with a personal desire for vengeance clinging to their hearts. <laughs> Do I get to pick character? Or do we just get assigned? Oh, okay. No, we get assigned no one, but there's a mirror right here, so I guess we get to pick after all. But can I? No, oh, I can only do this. So if I'd done this uh, in the camp, I would have been able to s sort of switch through um, every character, I'm pretty sure. So I wonder, you can see that there's like a limit to how much you can fill out. I wonder if like once you do get all of the stats there, then each of them will kind of unlock or something. Let's see if we get anything for maxing out this. Nope. That'll be okay. Okay, so now we actually get to pick. Well, I want to give Roberto his stats. If nothing else. Uh, but we haven't really seen much of him outside of that one fight. Uh, I think he seems... I mean, I was gonna say he seems cool. His fighting style seems cool. He doesn't... He seems like a dork, but... I don't know. We're still gonna enhance his skills. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's all fresh. I mean, he sort of kind of looks cool there, but that's only because fucking... Lord Bengus drew it, so of course the art's incredible. Do that, so that's gonna give us a new ability. A square at the right moment during the sway. What what sway? Maybe it's just part of his regular Wait. Square while swaying left and right. Maybe he does swaying instead of uh, dashing or something. We have to spend one point to just like unlock it. Make that easier. I did do the thrust upgrade for a Tenkai, I'm just remembering. Okay, so we can do it two ways, I see. I guess I should put... The attack so far is the only thing. So thrust, lift, finisher, kick. Yeah. I did do this, basically, yeah. Alright, yeah, because I never did get the flaming sword. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can actually swap. Anytime you have a partner character, you can play as either character. That's kind of a new thing in this game. Uh, but yeah, Gikman, like the CG stuff is like... That would have been like outsourced to a different company. But... Capcom generally had... All the budget, at least, to... Uh, 
get really nice CG stuff. And that's been a fun thing to look at over the series, too, because it's generally been good overall. But uh, for each new game, including this one, just the, the production value and quality of those pre-rendered scenes, like, they, they look really awesome. But that's the thing about this game, like, there's stuff like that that looks expensive and well-made and just really nicely polished and presented. And then you have, like, text, dialogue stuff, uh, and other things that just feel weirdly cheap and kind of... The, the kind of level of production values and polish and slickness of the presentation just feels a lot more inconsistent in this game. There's a lot more things that feel kind of slighter and cheaper than there are things that stand out as particularly polished. Are you like the same as the level design too? Like everything is like in this these boxy hallways. where one room looks identical to the last. So a lot of... just feels significantly less interesting to move around in and explore. Yeah, and then you have stuff like this that just pop up. But it's interesting too about the, the Bengus artwork. Like, it's super gorgeous. And it's like, I feel like it's unusual for his art or this kind of art to be featured in this way in any Capcom games around this time. Like, you would see more of it, I guess, you know, in the arcade days. Um, even though it would kind of come across different because it would be like pixel art and everything. And the other Onimusha games mostly had, uh, most of the artwork was by uh, Ikeno, like the key art and the character illustrations and stuff. And but very little of that was ever in the actual game itself. So it, it feels more video gamey and, you know, arguably anime to put this artwork front and center in the game. I appreciate it because it's, it's beautiful. I love the art, but it, it contributes to the feeling of like a departure. And having these things like sort of pop up like this feels I don't, you know, I don't know these games, well, those games well, but it would, I feel like in a Devil May Cry or something, I'd be like, all right, yeah, cool, makes sense. But here, to have this very video gamey thing, you know, the, the, the bloody palace thing, whatever, the demon realm, um, optional challenge things that were in the previous Onimusha, they felt a little more carefully wrapped in a sort of narrative layer, whereas this is like, fuck it, video game. And that's not something I have anything against. In fact, I would think more games probably should do that. But it stands out because it's so different from how the previous games in the same series handled similar concepts. I literally just pressed the button without reading. Okay, it's fine. Well, I guess that's our target. Stand up, please. Oh, shit, I tried to do the special so I could do a um, uh, chain. Um, so I can do the chain is sent, but I, I, yeah, bronze 
Yeah, that went terribly. So I'm gonna get like a some shit item for this. Wildflower. But I can just redo this also. I can try these challenges multiple times. No camera control in this room for some reason. Yeah, it'd be like interesting and in I guess in a way to to learn like why what it is that made this game only two more moves huh? why this game is so different from the others I can't do like Obviously not gonna work. Okay, they're, they're, they started off extremely trivial, but they're, they're definitely ramping up a little bit here. first time. So this, the yellow that's on the middle row needs to move down at some point. So I have to move this section. Well, technically, I guess I could. Oh, okay. Oh wait, that puts the greens up there. That's not going to be helpful, is it? Unless there's got to be some unintuitive thing like that, right? Otherwise. Do this eventually. If I do this first, Yeah, they will always rotate clockwise. They usually, like, they, there's usually a pretty strict limit on, like, how you can interact with them. Sort of kind of how it works. It could be stuff like that. It's just the order. seemed like it was... I did something that made me think, like, oh, maybe I did. Oh, okay, so... No, wait, hang on. I still need to fucking do that. Okay, so maybe I'm back to the drawing board. Maybe this is... Maybe I need to do to rotate this, but I shouldn't do it before... Basically, I can't put any of this yellow up like this, because then I would have to rotate it too many times around. Okay, so that means the only two... That means I can't rotate this unless there's already not... So let's say I do this, then this, and then this. Obviously, I can't... Complete. I'm just like 
sort of breaking it down here one at a time. These were so easy at the beginning. I'm not surprised or it doesn't feel weird that they are becoming more difficult. That's exactly what I would expect and want. Table. Uh, but the sudden rate at which <clears throat> the difficulty is increasing is, is uh, surprising me a little. Try going back to doing this first. That still will work because you rotate that down. Okay, yeah, right, right, right. You can you have the option to break them. I'm I'm guessing maybe you get a worse item if you do that. I guess you can think about it too, like, in terms of synergy. Making sure that when you rotate something as, like, as many of the or gems as possible end up in, like, a, a good spot, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's kind of always going to be something like that. The whatever are the most obvious things are the most the most wrong. I don't know. They're not correct. Um, so that's the thing. Like, obviously, this puts things in a better spot, but more than likely is going to trip up some other necessary step. But with, like, the, the limited amount of moves to begin with, four moves means you can't, like, take the same part and just turn it around multiple times too much without, like, if it's... Yeah, it just doesn't seem possible to do that and get that blue gem where it needs to be. Yeah, you don't want that like diagonal pattern for sure. So like if I do this and then do that, like it's still... Yeah, that takes up like all of my moves basically. Yeah, so like, I need to spend one move to get the yellow down. I need to spend two moves to get the greens down. And I need to spend one move getting this green up, basically.
Unless I'm thinking about this like completely wrong. Of course, when I say like like spending like This move would, would move that down, but I could do this move to move it further right and then flip. Like, there could be some less intuitive. But if we were to assume that I'm doing this move and this move, yeah, even then, do this so that's basically the same because the order there doesn't change right as long as I'm moving sets of four that don't overlap Then it doesn't matter which order I do them. And what that means is that for the order to make any difference, which we kind of know that it does, meaning there's probably some key to getting it right involves making sure that you hit stuff in the right order. And for the order to be important, it will, would only be important if the moves you make overlap. So technically, this and this does overlap. believe like of all the puzzle boxes in all games i feel like this is the first one that's kind of stumped me although i definitely have had puzzle boxes where i've succeeded sort of by mistake something so wacky as getting I feel like once I get a blue the bottom row like I'm already I'm already done oh that's not what I want to do stumped on this there has to be like i have to be falling into some patterns of just trying the same thing over and over it's so hard to keep mental track of what you may or may not have tried and seeing things in a different way like your brain just creates these patterns Alright, let's try breaking it and see what happens. How does that work? 
Oh! I see. So that's why we didn't need the appraisal. Because we already... We always got... Interesting. So basically, I assume this means we get the same item. But in order to get any amount of use out of it, we have to actually... Uh, appraise it first. That's kind of a neat system. So that basically means trading uh, money for patience. <laughs> That's kind of cool. You can give it a shot and then when you give up, it's like, well, fuck it. I at least get something out of it. I like that. Yeah, I'm just surprised at the at the suddenness of the escalation of difficulty. At least as I experience it. Uh, let's get a little bit of back. Oh, we can keep doing that while we're on the next screen. Guys, sleeping or doing push-ups or what? Recover. It's pretty fun. The partner AI is. I mean, yeah, he's standing there blocking right now because I, I've instructed him to, but overall, trying to sort of corral and deal with your AI partners. Kind of weirdly a lot of a nuisance in this game. More than I would have expected anyway. Find him here. Gambler's symbol. Guessing that's a crafting item? No, it's, oh, it's an uh, equipment thing? Oh yeah, this got unequipped because we put it on some other character. Increase the odds of finding an item. What moves the finisher? We go into the skills. I don't want this anyway, but. Oh, that's a down attack, okay. Oh yeah, right, I can't put points here. Yeah, of course. So now I have to keep track of which characters is which color on the minimap. There's no indication, you just have to know or guess, I suppose. I've kept upgrading the parry. To uh, improve or increase the timing window. Fucking up, but that's gonna explode. Okay, well, you can. That's a... See, that's a great example. Like, the AI just doesn't know or care. We'll just keep running into the exploding robot corpses. Oh, and I died. Okay. Died. Sure did. 
The third game was a lot easier than the second. Uh, this is... Um, like, I guess it depends on... Like, whether you consider it easy or hard. Uh, oh, that's a good chunk. Like, I guess... I don't know that this is more difficult, but... Will the... Yeah, he blocked it. It's like a guard crush. Like... Do you think of difficulty as, like... Difficulty in avoiding getting hit? Or difficulty in... Avoiding... Death? Uh, you know, because those can be kind of different things. It can be easy to avoid death if it's like if the game keeps bombarding you with healing items. Um, I find this game to be like whenever you get hit, like in some cases with stuff like that, it can be hard to avoid taking damage. But you also, whenever you do take damage or open yourself up, like it's it seems common to get comboed. Oh yeah, dude, I have I I, uh, I have one of these I never even used. I think. Oh, I must have, uh, must have ended up using it. Spread the love. What's up, Easy 8 Yeah, we just had Robert join our party. He makes me wish we could have items to to dress up because I don't really like his outfit. There we go. Now we have this move. Fuck So maxing out this, I don't think it's gonna necessarily give us a new move because this is already kind of an extended move. Well, we know at least that the thrust gives a new move with every other character so far, or with a few of them. Probably all of them do, but all the different moves. Be safe. Yeah, I guess it makes sense that the game has like. A oh yeah, that's right. Because I remember seeing artwork. This game has a bunch of like Street Fighter costumes that all look terrible. Um, uh, but there's probably other costumes too. Because I think that's been in basically all of these games. Um, but. I'm generally not going to be that. I mean, especially for how we're playing these games here. But just in general... Uh, getting a reward for beating the game implies that you intend to play it multiple times. And I'm not, like, opposed to that, per se, but depending on what it is... Like, Onimusha 1 and 2... see replaying the essence are so fucking good like it's just some of the most satisfying shit i feel like i've done in any game of this type in a very long time so you know the game has its highlights for sure but yeah like i don't know you know let's say you beat the game you get some stuff and you want to play it again five years later for the hell of it you know, in situations like that, it's nice to have something to spice up that second playthrough, maybe. But I don't feel like it's a game I'm excited to, like, play and replay. Any game that's, like, more than a few hours long, I think it's just not fun to do that with. Uh, oops. So, these aren't, like, actual... Oh, wait. Okay. That was an actual door. I'm gonna assume that it wasn't, because it didn't look like one on the map. I guess it had a little doormat. Maybe that indicates that it's a pathway. Or it's nothing. I don't think I unlocked any costumes in 2. I don't remember doing so. But I did weird get the weird panda costume or whatever it was in 3. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love playing dress-up. That's like one of the best things I know in, in games. 
I'm not a fan of receiving rewards after I'm done with the game. But I suppose, like, I don't know. You can, um... If you get really into the combat, maybe if you play in a higher difficulty level or something that has more... that requires more of you to engage more with the system. You do some kind of new game plus thing, you have the gear, you have some kind of specific strategy. If you get more invested in some of those systems, maybe there's more reason to want to keep playing and doing post-game stuff or whatever. At which point, it's nice to keep having rewards. So it depends a lot on the game and how things work. Not to say that I'm playing this for the story, exactly, but I'm playing it more for the kind of sightseeing aspect of going through the game from beginning to end and seeing what it has to offer. Maybe by the time of it, I'm super invested in the mechanics and gear shit. I don't know. I don't expect that to be the case, but who knows? But I know for a fact that, like, in, in a lot of games that would offer rewards for beating the game like that, I'm gonna feel a bit annoyed if it's something I really would have wanted. Specifically costumes, I guess. I would have just preferred to have had the option. Oh. Guess we needed a cutscene of me taking two steps after stepping down the staircase. So I love that little narration. Like, that's really cool. But it doesn't happen very often. It's a little weird how... Again, it just adds to that strange feeling of inconsistency that this game has. Like... Where... Some, games, some things just feel weirdly cheap. Oh, wow, okay. Set him on fire. Or the stuff that gives the game a sort of polished, high-quality, big-budget feel are used conspicuously sparingly. I don't know. But it's, I don't know, I guess it can be like a... Uh, a difficult sort of tightrope to walk because... If you happen to really be into a game, you beat it and you expect to play it more, you're going to be happy and grateful to have some kind of reward or some tangible thing to sort of take with you into the next uh, playthrough. You know, so I can see that too. It's a hard thing to get right. I mean, it's certainly not easy to make satisfy everyone, so... So I wonder... If... We'll be, like, the Issen is just, like, they fucking nailed it. It's so sick in this game. It seemed very often to me that if I did a... Technically take damage. Uh, if I did a special... Well, Oni Magic, as they call it. I could follow it up with this end. But I wonder if it just so happens that... You have iframes and stuff, and there's just some weird buffer that... Basically makes the timing window... Weirdly large. Because I don't think it's a, a, a mechanic per se... That you can just follow it up. But basically, whenever I do a, a magic, I usually kind of mash square. 
And sometimes that results in an Isen. And whenever you do get one, the chain, you can basically mash to get the chain out, which I think is awesome because the chain Isen in three was like super sick, but it was basically impossible to do. Decreases defense by 10, but increases attack by 15. That's cool, but I eat a lot of damage. And whenever I eat any damage, I usually eat a lot because you get comboed. So I'm not, I don't think I want to use that. I'm a little scared to use it. Uh, but I can swap the Sergeant's Ring for the Samurai's Ring. I have two of those, actually. Right now, I guess I might as well equip this, because no one else is... No one else has this. Like the juggle stuff is neat. I like that a lot. Like one thing that I definitely found myself a little annoyed with at times. Uh, in the other games, especially with down attacks, but just in general, like stuff whiffing or not hitting as you would would have wished that it did. Um, oh yeah, maybe the the Street Fighter costumes were because uh, there's a thing on the main menu where you like link up with some mobile phone account stuff, uh, which I guess they would have they must have done differently in the overseas version. Makes sense. Yeah, I'd like but like I said, I, I would have assumed that there were some more additional costumes beyond that. Yeah, like, I'm usually not a big fan of, like, putting costumes from other games and stuff. Like, I mean, it can work, but a lot of the time... If it's a character that has some kind of a style or personality, I would usually prefer... ...original costumes based on that character, as opposed to just putting them in someone else's outfits. Uh, but especially when you take, like, as in this case, when you put Street Fighter costumes on these characters, like, the, the costume designs are all a little bit different and changed to sort of fit with the art style of this game. Uh, the character proportions and everything, like, it's just, it, I mean, it's like, I don't know, Fortnite Ryu or whatever, it just looks like a someone dressed up as him, which I guess in this case is what it's supposed to be, but it still doesn't look very cool. It just looks like a lamer version of what that original thing is or was. So, I mean, I'm sure it can be pulled off super well. I don't have any specific instances I can think of at the top of my head, but um, I can't think of many instances of where I disliked it either. It's just, uh, I don't know. Street Fighter's done that a little bit. Like Street Fighter V has a bunch of those like EX, costumes, whatever they... And I'm not a, the biggest fan of those. But at least those were its own thing. Uh, like in Street Fighter 4, one of Zangief's costumes is just like a Hagar cosplay, basically. Um, and I guess Cody has a Hagar cosplay in Street Fighter 5, too, as one of his, like, regular... Well, whatever, DLC costumes. And that, that really rubs me the wrong way, because it's... When it's like a, a part of a bonus whatever thing, it's... I mean, I still don't like it, but it doesn't bother me exactly. But when you have something that ostensibly is a costume that like within the fiction of the game is something that they would wear, which it's not necessarily presented that way, but, you know, it, it's taking the place of what could have been an original costume. And like, what possible reason would there be like, it's such a weird meta thing, I guess, of, like, Zangief and Hagar, like, oh, they're wrestlers, they have the pile drivers, and they were rivals or whatever. But it doesn't make sense, in my opinion, for Zangief to dress up as Hagar. Why would he do that? Like, it's... I don't know, that shit's just kind of stupid to me. <laughs> um, so I swap back. I'm just realizing now that... I didn't I could end up I could level this up. I only used that 
very briefly for the boss, and then I like switched back because I wanted to freeze back. I don't know, maybe these other weapons are like really good if I, if I level them up a ton. I don't even know what OP is. I haven't reached the point where I can get OP. I don't even know what 500 additional OP would do, and I don't know what's the max level either. Um, let's do this, and let's try the cutting room. Let's bring that up to level 5. So... Oh yeah, so it has a... Okay. But I guess on the flip side... Yeah, okay, so it is it is going up pretty substantially in attack power. Glacier Song is 34 now. Cutting Wind is 37, okay. So it's definitely not a linear progression. means that I could, like, some of these weapons that seem kind of weak could actually go up a lot. Can't know. Yeah, OP, zero out of zero. That's an entirely, like, me new mechanic. Okay, so we didn't have we didn't have any upgrade things to unlock level two and three of magic. So this weapon just has level three magic. Because I was thinking maybe that would mean that this weapon only has one level of magic. But no, this one just has all three levels right off the bat. There's just so much shit to keep track of in this game. I'd like to manage. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I wanted to try to... Like, the... The game says, basically, that you can... Double tap or, like, mash. The armor break isn't is so fucking sick. That's a great addition. Like, it's already satisfying to use the kick to break armor. So you can just like, immediately isn't off of it. Pretty sick. Uh, but I, I felt like I, even though, yeah, pressing multiple times is supposed to ostensibly absorb stuff faster. Hard to tell. I'll save that for someone else. Oh, he's shooting multiple. This dude found a really good sweet spot to avoid getting hit by the floating pumpkins. I was like, I still think this game has a lot of issues, but I feel like I'm, I'm, uh, don't gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm a little more like getting used to how our thing works and everything. But even though there's been certain fights that have been a little bit annoying or what have you. Okay. 
Every now and then you can do shit like that and it fucking owns. Did he not die? Holy shit. I was like, oh my god, he must be dead. Let me quickly get some of these orbs. Being able to uh, cancel out of your own hit stun to do the, the special moves is also, also a nice touch. Like a combo break kind of thing. Yeah, damage received 2,000. I think that's pulled our rank down significantly. <laughs> Red mushrooms, they don't look they don't look healthy. I guess like I kind of can go in tonight knowing what I like what issues I have with the game. And uh, focus more on what I no, I enjoy about it, I guess. I don't know. We have multiple thrusts. I want to see the, the silhouetted artworks. They, they look promising. I hope I can get to see those eventually. Okay, so there's something here. It's like a door on the map, but I can't actually open it, so... I'll save just in case. Who knows where technical errors here and there. Also, I guess it should be mentioned that I, uh, once I did just tug a little bit on the cable in the SCART switcher, it doesn't seem like we've had any video hiccups, so that probably did fix it. It's a weird screen transition. Like, I hit the screen transition, and in the next room, it was just kind of zoomed out. I guess it also helps that um, this level uh, has been has not had any annoying bullshit like puzzle solving and tedious backtracking or anything like that. It's a very linear, simple stage, which is like what most of the previous two games were. So, you know, some stages are going to be more annoying than others. And when you're playing through a less annoying stage, the game's going to be less annoying. <laughs> more fun. That wasn't supposed to be like a reveal, right? I'm pretty sure they've gone over that. It's kind of weird seeing a character like, uh, what was his name? Claudio? Um, having such a very distinct, like, Capcom video game um, look. Try to run away. There we go. And, uh,. When some other characters like Soki and Tenkai have like super bland, generic looking faces. Still getting hit, nice. Recovering inside his hitbox. That's a blood axle. Ha <laughs> ha. 
I just wanted to absorb the gems as quickly as I could. Uh. Oh, I'm stuck. But the, I think the the these kinds of fights, like the the weird bug queen, have uh, a little bit too much of excusing, confusing uh, shit going. Oh, I keep getting fucking OTG'd in this game. It's just oh, that feels so fucking shit. I mean, you can do that to them, so I guess it's fair, but it feels terrible. Look at how much health I, I took from that. You know? Even level 2 is probably completely... I'm holding block. Whoa. Did I... Unlock some other skill? No. I have hell jab. I didn't actually... Fucking hell. Yeah, because I didn't get to use skills before the start of the level, because I forgot. So we have a bunch of banked skill points. Oh. Um. I mean, when I don't have to babysit an AI... Um. These one-on-one -on -one fights. I mean, it's kind of the combat system and the mechanics of how this works and how it feels. Like, that's the best part of the game. But when it focuses more on that, like, it's... it's Highly enjoyable. I mean, I have like a billion items and I keep crafting more between levels, so... I can... I can justify using some. Swipe again. I, I knew it. I blocked, but I this time. Oh, no. It's like mashing on wake up. Oh. Okay. I think I would be enraged, but yeah, like you take shit ton of damage in this game. Whenever you get hit, like, enemies hit extremely hard. And a lot of your animations like, are like super committal. So it, it like feels kind of fast and loose. And you can cancel a lot of stuff with your magic. But you can't cancel anything with blocking or dodging. I guess the Ukemi to like land safely or whatever is like a super important thing because whenever you do get knocked down. Uh, you're kind of fucked. I blocked, but I got guard crushed and then I got comboed by his fucking flame aura. Try to run away. I wasn't fast enough. I'm blocked I blocked, but... Well, I can use an item now. Like, yeah, I blocked his attack, but the attack guard crush, and he, like, pushes his own, like, hitbox forward, so his flame aura hit me. And, like, yeah, I'm like, I, I can't get out of this exactly, like... <sighs> yep, same thing happened, like... Maybe I should... Oh, that's not what I meant. Oh, I accidentally tapped the block. 
ball, try to walk left, so I did a slide. Or maybe, like, I thought I could block that. I don't know why I thought that. I was going to say, I should probably use the meter more defensively instead of when I'm already dealing damage. Uh, just hit him out of his attack phase. Because that seemed like it worked. It seems like he got, basically got stunned. But if I just used my specials in the complete opposite way that I had done, it probably would have been a lot easier. But it's good that the game has like those kinds of strategic decision-making in combat, because that's what makes something like this interesting. Uh, broadly speaking, the game is my least favorite of the four by a fairly significant margin. Um, is how I feel currently. Uh, I'm having more fun with it now than I did on Saturday, I think, but... Um, there's a lot more annoying and tedious stuff. Like, the good parts are at least as good as it's been in any of the other... Like, the combat um, is good. Um, I'm trying to pay attention here, because the other thing is I, like... We're spending a lot of time and effort on people talking about shit, and I still have, like, barely any clue of what any of it's about. Which is a bit of an issue, also. Denka! どうか他国への侵略を中止。日の元の民、異国の民、すべての民の命を帰りにください。なんと馬鹿なことを申す。秀康よ。我こそが国家、豊臣こそが日の元、我こそが世界を手に入れるにふさわしい覇王よ。この
Oh yeah, this was... Saw this in the intro, I think, too. Enter Tony Mushimoto. I was gonna say, he was like... Um, had this dark glow. <laughs> I hit them hard. There was a thing like this in the beginning, I think. Can't remember. Uh, but yeah. So maybe the OP thing that we didn't... Well, actually, it wouldn't be related to this shit, because every character had it. Uh, but yeah, like, I think the parts that are good about this game are good. They're just as good, if not better, than they have ever were. Uh, but this game adds a lot of stuff and, like, changes things in a way... It just adds... It feels way more bloated with systems and shit, like, management of items and stats and upgrades and characters there's just a whole bunch of shit to keep track of that you have to spend time and energy on that's not playing the game uh, like loot and like oh i don't like that stuff it's not it's not about the grinding at all um I haven't been grinding anything. It's about when I want to be focusing on adventuring and fighting, I have to manage my equipment and keep track of numbers and be mindful of where I put my XP. Um, and I can't know where I'm supposed to put my XP because I don't have the information before. Um, like, the decision making of where, which weapon to upgrade like, in the other games, you have a, up to three weapons, and that's it. In this game, there's five characters who each have potentially a dozen different weapons. And then it's also their armor, and they all share the same pool of points. So anytime I'm spending points, I have to be like... I have, I'm second-guessing every point I spend, wondering if that's really what I should have done. Which makes it less enjoyable to spend points, and it's just another something I have to sort of be worried or concerned with. Which takes enjoyment away from well, everything, basically. Can I just, I don't know. See if I could destroy those things. But like that's my bigger issue. But it's also like there's more dialogue, which I'm not that interested in. Like the plot is not something I was overly concerned with in any of the games. Um, but if the storytelling was able to be more focused when there was less like sort of corrupt, uh, I'm. Uh, I stopped pressing the button, but he kept attacking. I mean, it's partly that, Maloney, which I agree with. Um, I, I agree that it's a misplaced idea, I mean. Uh, not that I agree with the idea. Um, but I think it's also, like, just focusing it in, in a different direction and a different sort of type of experience. Um, having to, like, get different, because it's not like they, they took the previous games and added more and did, because, like, Onimusha 2, I feel, by comparison, is much more so taking Onimusha 1 and adding a lot more content, sort of, right? Um, and, of course, doing that doesn't have to mean literally doing the exact same thing, but more of it. Um... But also, you know, it can be... That can involve taking things in a different direction. Uh, 
And which they did. They they expanded on the, the system stuff and you had the gifting, so like you had multiple characters who you could get weapons for and everything. Um, but here it's like they're adding an entire layer of item and stat management. RPG mechanics like stats and level ups. Uh, which is like completely foreign to the game. You know, wouldn't it be weird if, well, maybe they did in more recent ones, I guess I don't know, but it's like in the next Resident Evil, like the, the supposed remake of RE4, like what if you have levels? What if Leon can level up? You get XP for killing zombies, you level up, and when you level up, you put points into agility and strength. Like that would be weird. I don't want to like. That's not something that that game needs, and it's not something that Onimusha needed either, if you ask me. So it, it's like it makes you have to divide your attention in a totally needless thing. I think there's stuff about uh, Onimusha too, especially the the scenario system that makes it um, that makes it. Um, it's very obtuse, and I think it's a okay system if you don't concern yourself with trying to get to all of it. I feel like trying to unlock 100% of the scenario scenes in Onimusha 2 would drive me insane. Uh, I would 1000% not even attempt it without a guide. Um, maybe I would try to play the game a second time to see and try to go for some different things. But I wouldn't know how to do it because the game, like, it's completely obfuscated how that works. Even if you figure that gifting items has an impact on it, you don't know. The points that govern what scenes play out are invisible, and you don't know what the thresholds are to trigger certain scenes without a guide. So, like, it's just kind of impossible to keep track of. But aside from that, I think overall, I, I agree, generally speaking, that to expand it on what one did well and what was cool about it. Um, so yeah, I think that cryptic is a good word for it, and I, I, I may have some critique of that, you know. But ultimately, especially if you're just playing it through the ones, like that's not going to have a, a real impact on your experience. Like I was more, I was more uh, critical of that stuff at the beginning of the game than I was by the end of it. But this game, like, it doesn't really. I don't know. It adds stuff that kind of detracts from the experience, but also stuff like I think the levels, the level design is worse, and it's hard to pinpoint specifics of how and why that is. But it's just the, the it's. Uh, some of them has like a lot of uh, backtracking. A lot of the levels are split up into very tiny rooms that are all very boxy. You don't really get... I, I'm not sure if any... Well, we have the staircase, but I was going to say, like, have we even seen slopes? Like, everything is so flat and boxy. And then you have stuff where you have to not just walk in between a bunch of doors, but also like ladders going up and down. And it's always like fade to black and you're like... Just having a, a sense of geography of where you are relative to the rest of what you can see and do, like... Uh, it's... I feel like it's legitimately... ...weaker... ...than the previous games. With... ...certain things like that. So I think it's a, it's a combination of going in a direction that I don't particularly enjoy. Uh, and also doing certain things worse than the previous games did. He's like not easy to hit. All this shit is on screen anyway.
Yeah, like the game, from all I can tell, like, did not seem to be received super well. But it was hard to know, like, if it's um, a loud minority of Onimusha fans uh, versus general consumers. Um, but I think it's it's like. Almost surprising that we haven't seen more attempts to do something with Donimusha. Um, there's certainly a bunch of other PS2 era Capcom stuff that we haven't seen much of, or, or you know, but it being such a prominent series, you know, all things considered. That there wasn't even even an attempt, like a weird PS3 one that didn't go over well, ending the series. I can sort of see that. <laughs> but it is. I I, I um, we mused a little bit on that last time. Like, what would a new Onimusha even be? But I think it's a it's a series that uh, wouldn't have to be. Uh, I think in some ways, what this game is doing. Would be probably representative of what it might be. But I think the the, the sort of atmosphere, like they, because they could easily have a new, like it wouldn't have to be that tightly connected story-wise. It could have totally new characters. Um. But I wouldn't want it to be like, I don't know, some kind of open world nonsense. I wouldn't want it to push even further into the RPG stuff that this game adds. I can't remember specifically what I was saying when we talked about it, but it is like one of those things where if this series had kept going, maybe this one would have been seen less as an outlier. Because the first three are so similar in many ways, mechanically and structurally, that this stands out. But it's not like if it had kept going that every game would have needed to stick so closely. It's not like the series could not have reinvented itself to some degree. So I think it's more of the tonal stuff and the vibes of this game that feel a little more off and make it feel less appealing than the others. I think this is not a bad game. It just feels kind of more generic in some ways. Got exploded. Yamamono wa kore de katazuki mashita zo. Saate mina sama yoku goro ojiro. Daigo no hanami yoi yo koko ni kiwamare. Alright, level complete, I guess. <clears throat> well, like, there's nothing to say that Onimusha wasn't profitable. I mean, we don't know. But, you know, it's a big corporation. It's all about um, opportunity cost, right? Um, there's a lot of stuff, like I said, you know, the way the industry, uh, you know, 
has shifted for for big developers and publishers like Capcom in the past 10 to 15 years. There's obviously going to be um, fewer, just fewer games being put out. And uh, when I'm thinking of like sort of late era PS2 stuff from Capcom, like yeah, there was, um, you know, RE4 and Outbreak, which I wish, which I think was somewhat concurrent. Um, you had DMC3 and it's like the special edition, whatever. Um, there were the Onimusha games. Um, because three was in 2004 and this was 06. And then you had like Shadow of Rome, um, Haunting Ground. Um, what else? There was that clock tower thing that Capcom was involved with somehow, right? Maybe that was a little earlier. I'm not sure. Uh, and I mean, this is concurrent with Lost Planet and Dead Rising. Like, there was a lot of shit like coming. Yeah, the Clover stuff too, of course. God Hand and Okami. Like, that's a pretty big number of games to come out in like a two-year period, I feel like. Um, so, you don't really see, like, some of that, like, would... I mean, Dino Crisis 3, I think, was... Maybe that was a little bit earlier. Um, I'm not sure, but... There was just a lot going on, um, and by necessity, there would be less stuff, um, at some point. So, when picking and choosing what to make, like, it makes sense to focus on the most profitable or the most, like, meaningful stuff to do. Um... And when Resident Evil 4 was really, really big and popular, and 5 and 6, like, each Resident Evil kept selling more than the last one. Um, Dead Rising and Lost Planet both got a couple of sequels. Um, there weren't a lot of things. Like, Devil May Cry and Resident Evil, I feel like, are the standout things that existed like across the ps2 generation and the following generation kind of um because none, none of the other stuff really and even then like dmc had you know dmc4 came out in what 2008 or something like that and then the the dmc ninja theory thing which is kind of like not exactly a vote of confidence for the ip right to do this like other thing <clears throat> yeah of course and then you know outsourcing stuff more and that's i mean that's again an industry-wide thing monster hunter of course yeah yeah um but even then like it's interesting because monster hunter that was not like a ps3 thing it was just a psp thing and then a, a 3ds eventually but of course yes a lot of resources would have been put towards that direction and even more so now i'm guessing um, I mean, technically, uh, Monster Hunter started on the PS2, but um, either way, like it wasn't there wasn't even if there was a PS3 one at some point, like it wasn't. It's still a different thing altogether. I feel like than comparing um, Lost Planet or RE or whatever. Yeah, no, I mean, like it wasn't. It wasn't a big deal on PS2, but it, I mean, you should probably put it together um, with all those other games in terms of just what they were putting out around that time on console. Uh, but I think, I mean, broadly speaking, I think uh, Capcom su succeeded a lot better than most in terms of both critically and uh, commercially with their, their focus on Western stuff because... Um, the Dead Rising sequels, even though I have my qualms with some of them, uh, bigger or smaller, um, that was a, like a big successful brand that kept going, and at least for a little bit, it was maintained a level of faithfulness. Um, I feel like there were other examples of companies uh, sort of outsourcing Western stuff with far, far less success.
But I think they were definitely ahead of the curve with uh, stuff like Dead Rising and Lost Planet. Like they, Capcom was early in the Japanese game industry of realizing the worth, uh, the necessity of targeting a global audience um, as opposed to making stuff for Japan and then figuring out how to sell it overseas. Street Fighter 4 is an interesting thing because, yes, it was obviously, certainly Street Fighter was a brand with more kind of focus put into it during that time frame than in the sort of PS2 time frame. But at the same time, in the grand scheme of things, I don't know. Maybe, you know, Street Fighter 5 versus Resident Evil and Monster Hunter, I think maybe is a clearer thing where Street Fighter, like, is not as big budget of a production i feel like with street fighter 4 maybe that wasn't quite the same level of uh of a gap i don't know but that's just kind of the impression i get but 5 especially seems so weird with like everything being kind of outsourced and um parts of it feeling very i don't know cheap and janky in some ways Anyway, um, it's uh, it's interesting to speculate <laughs> and theorize about some of that stuff. I, I wouldn't say I'm clamoring for a new Onimusha. Um, if they announced one, I'd keep my eye on it. Would I buy it when it came out and played it? Uh, I don't know. Depends on what they would do with it, I guess. Um, I feel like it could go any number of directions in terms of of art and aesthetics, because I feel like I'm I'm inclined to say that I don't know that I would like what it looks like very much. Because I think like RE7 and RE8, whatever, they're they're fine. Um the RE2 remake and whatever, like and even DMC5, uh in motion, it, it's not a bad looking game in any way, but I don't love the realistic looking characters. I would much prefer if they looked like the CG characters from three. Like the promo renders of the characters from from C DMC three to me is like, man, I wish they would fo like I wish they would artistically aim for that style. Um, it would to me be so much more aesthetically appealing. Um, but of course, Onimusha in particular had realistic like real actors from day one, so I feel like if they that's what they would do, right? That's what they should do probably, but maybe they wouldn't go for actual famous actors. I don't know. Uh, I think Capcom has been better than a lot of big companies at actually daring to put out games that aren't 80-hour slogs. So um, maybe there could be some hope that they would put out a nice, tight action experience. Uh, but I don't know. Hey, who knows? The Game Awards is on Thursday, right? Maybe they'll announce Onimusha 5. <laughs> I strongly doubt it, but you know. Uh, who knows? Anyway, uh, I'm just realizing it's it's uh, significantly past 10 p.m. here. It's high time for me to wrap up. Uh, thanks for hanging out. And I will say, uh, at the beginning of the stream, I was like, you know what? This is kind of the first time in my playing through this series where I, I left the last stream not at all excited to continue playing. Um, but I'm uh, I'm having a more positive outlook on this game. I still maintain all of my critique pretty much. But it's um we had some some pretty fun stages there and uh it's um I'm enjoying myself enough and I'm looking forward to playing more. But uh we're 8 hours in. We're still on disc 1. Who knows how much we have left. <laughs> might be a game. Uh, uh, might be a while. Um uh, Let's see who we shall uh, raid and uh, and uh, and check out. Let's, uh, let's check out Goaty. He's doing uh, Assault to Lanos, I believe. That's a pretty cool game. Let's uh, let's say hello to him. Enjoy some some giant robots. Actually, they're they're pretty tiny in Lanos, but they're anime robots anyway. Thanks a lot for hanging out, guys. I'll see you guys Wednesday with more Shin Onimusha Dawn of Dreams. Take care, everybody.
Thanks for watching and 